Hi, my name is Luna Pan, and welcome to today's Composer to Composer interview, brought to you by the Australian Guild of Screen Composers. Today, we welcome composer Maria Alfonsing, stage and screen composer, songwriter, musical director, and performer. Maria Alfonsing's focus is always it's all about the story. Maria is currently composer and sound designer for Sydney Theatre Company. She received two APRA nominations: Best Music for a TV Series and Best Television Theme, and an ARIA nomination, Best Soundtrack Album for ABC TV Series Wakefield. Other recent work includes composer and songwriter on Australian feature film Akoni, documentary A Certain Mother, advertisement for Amazon and American Express, music producer and performer on the audiobook Mother Tongues. Orchestrator and conductor for the George Ellis Orchestra with Metropolis Touring, performer and musical director on children's musical Alphabetical Sydney, All Aboard at Riverside Theatres, and next year at Sydney Opera House. With Damien Debu Smith, Maria runs Mad BS Composing Palace, where they compose, record, and produce music for stage, screen, and commercial release. Today, Maria has brought us two projects that she worked on: Wakefield and Akoni. Hi, Maria. Welcome to today's interview. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, let's talk about、um, how did you start your career as a composer? What inspired you to start your journey? Yeah, well, I started out writing songs. Um, and play clarinet and piano as a child, and I put bands together to play my songs and arrange music and and things like that. But it took quite a while until I understood that I was a composer.、Um, I think it came from I like I constantly fell in love with different instruments and sounds, and then I studied songwriting and also a theatre. Uh, music drama in Sweden, and through that I got to understand that I really love storytelling through music, and、um, then I came to Australia to do my composition degree at AIM at、uh, and Sydney Conservatorium of Music. So that's like how I started. So I started like in the music theatre and songwriting. Okay, cool. Is there a particular reason that you chose Australia as a country to study music? My sister was here at the time, and I came to visit her and really loved it. And、oh, okay. my partner at the time and I really wanted to study overseas. So, and we both loved Australia. So, looks like you're still loving it because you're still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about、uh, Wakefield, airing in ABC. It's a drama series.、Uh, Maria, could you please、uh, walk us through、uh, what the TV show is about?、Uh, so Wakefield is an eight-part ABC series, and it is set in a mental health hospital in the Blue Mountains. And we follow the patients and staff there at the hospital, and in particular Nick, who is a gifted nurse with Indian Australian background. And we follow him as his childhood trauma unravels. And、um, I co-composed the music for the series with Caitlin Yeo. And、uh, we mostly divided up the cues between us, so we wrote different themes. And the series in itself is、um, split up into silos, so we follow each. Character for a little while, and then we follow another character during the same time frame. So we revisit some scenes, but from different points of views. And I was also the musical director on the show, and so I, I was on set for the music and dance numbers because there's a music dance number in each episode. And Damien. Uh, my partner, he was the featured cellist and multi instrumentalist on the series, and、uh, also co composed some additional music.、Mm. Sounds like there's a lot of、um, creativity involved in creating the, the music. Yes, it was. It was a really, really great project because since the music, Kristen Dunphy, who created the show. 
uh, she had written in so much music into the script already. So the Common Lean is a song that triggers Nick's memories. So we hear this song a lot throughout the series. And also the dance numbers, because Nick, uh, in, as a child, he was a tap dancer. So he used to tap dance and that's where he found his joy. But then through the trauma, that I don't want to give away too much for someone who's going to watch it because uh, he can still watch the series on iview he lost the joy of tap dancing and then via common Aline, the the joy for tap and the, the the mystery unfolds via that song and so in each episode there's a dance number and so there is already so much music in the series so that way we could be more, I guess, bigger in the underscore as well. So it's a very, very, a very big story to write music to. Mm. Amazing. So without mm. further ado, let's look at some clips from Wakefield. Yeah. Clive, I completely wow. Understand. There's some haunting vocal in there. I love how the <laughs> yeah. texture just involves. It's so nice. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, so um, what inspired you? Is that the opening title for Wakefield? The one that you were nominated by Screen Music Awards? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the opening sequence of episode one. So this piece I wrote based on the script before the production started uh, because I came on board really early on on the project in the writing stages of uh, the project about two years prior to production started so I worked with Kristen Dunphy consulting her on the music um, and the usage of Common Aline which is the song that triggers Nick's trauma and the song was written into the script and ABC and the production company was afraid that it would annoy the audience too much. So uh, I worked together with Kristen to show how variations of the song could be used so it wouldn't be too annoying. So I created some variations in different uh, tabs of genres, both like different song styles, but also underscore versions of it, just to show how it can be used a lot without being too repetitive. And this music was brought into uh, brainstorming sessions. So I was in the brainstorming sessions at Jungle with the writing team and presented the music to ABC. And a lot of those early exploration and actually ended up in, in the series. And one of them were the opening sequence, which was actually a piece I wrote as a pitch 
to get the job um the opening sequence that we just watched and uh then it came back in the first edit of the of the uh, first episode and it really helped set the tone for the rest of the the music for the show and it became nick theme the nick theme that is kind of used and connected to nick throughout the eight episodes and it's a very textual theme as you could hear and it uses different sounds and instruments um, the psaltery is incredibly important it's a string instrument that we hear the very first sound that we hear and I chose the psaltery because it uh, has a very crystalline watery sound and when you play one single string the other strings resonate sympathetically with it so to symbolize Nick's trauma I felt like this was a good instrument because it really gives a sense of built-in reverb almost like water inside your head and the sound is also connected to a crystal in Nick's traumatic memories that unravels throughout the series and usually most often I just play a C note sometimes it's a D note but most often it's just a C note but it's performed in different ways every time we hear it uh, but it really kind of becomes a, a theme or like an incredibly short motif for next trauma. Also part of this uh, theme is reversed sounds, which is something that we used a lot throughout the series. Um, the reversed wine glasses are used in this um, theme that um, kind of plays with time because we go in and out the characters' minds a lot, and that way the reversed sounds was really good. And tap dance sounds is obviously very, very important for a series like this, uh, because tap dancing is such a huge part of, of Nick. And also we see the tap dancing uh, on screen, and here we see it in flashbacks. And so we recorded me tap dancing just to get all the kind of basic tap sounds and laid it across the keyboard so we could easily play whenever we needed tap rhythms just to have that as part of the rhythmic material. Uh, the tap dance numbers were recorded on set but uh, when it was used in the music like this it was good to have those the sampled tap. Uh, we also had um, the butterfly which we saw in in the clip um, which also had its own little reversed sound and another really crucial um, part of the music for the series was Rusha Lang, uh, a Hindustani vocalist, a beautiful vocalist who uh, used her voice and uh, lay it on top of a lot of our compositions. Um, just to have the strong connection to Nick's family background and uh, just this authentic Indian uh, feeling in there. And of course also Kamana Lean we have in, in, in this theme in the cello. It's a very kind of morphed, uh, weird version of Kamana Lean via the cello, but just to give a flavour of it, just to um, since it opens the whole series just to set the tone and just what, see what we're up for, really. Yeah, I love how you collect all the sound materials and use it in different ways. Yeah, yeah and that's really, that's the signature sound of Wakefield. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this became the Nick theme, so it was kind of used throughout, and, and also in combination with the cello. Like here in, in this clip, you hear a, a kind of a, a variation of common aline, it's like a bit kind of uh, tweaked, uh, but you still get that kind of feel of it. Did you record um, all those musicians beforehand, like before you pitch, or...? It's more of a continuing process where they come in once a week to record more material. 
Well, a lot of those sounds, um, a bit of combination of what you said, like uh, a lot of those sounds that we like that I used in this theme in particular, like was sounds that I could record myself and uh, with Damien. And of course, uh, Rusha had to bring in as a singer. But then we, uh, Caitlin and I, um, together with Damien, created a library of sounds and textures, both rhythmic and textural um, stems that we could have like a, a library. So we both could access uh, the same kind of sonic world, which was very handy. So we had stems from this theme, for example, and then uh, themes Caitlin created um, and other themes that I created. So we and had like a bank of um, sounds that we could draw from, which was incredibly handy uh, and just grew, of course, as much as we like as we progress. Yeah, I believe that really improves the efficiency when it comes to such a massive show. Yeah, yeah, no, it really does. And it also makes it cohesive and really fun to write with because then you can just develop the material as you go and the turnarounds are quite fast as well. So just to set the tone early on and then be able to have this material to work with is really good. Yeah, amazing. So what um, is there a second clip that we're sharing today? Yeah. Um, Yes, I thought we'd watch um, the gospel uh, number. It's from episode two. baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned in my name they will cast out demons they will speak in new tongues they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover I baptize you now in the name of the Father the Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost really great there's a lot of gospel singing that's recorded I assume it's recorded on set it is it is a combination so I can actually show you some uh, photos from where we were on set and when we recorded it uh, so this was an on-screen gospel element which was like written into the script beforehand as a congregation singing a traditional gospel song from Nick's uh, childhood memory. And then it morphs into Common Aline, as you heard. So the process was that I wrote a, a traditional sounding gospel song and then morphing it into Common Aline. So I started out by writing the 
gospel arrangement of Come and Aline. And then um, a gospel song, but that could still fit the lyrics of Come and Aline, but then also write new lyrics to it. So it can really have that kind of morphing more and more into Come and Aline. And Leah Howard was the lead singer uh, on set. Mm. And so I recorded her before the set, which I thought I could show you some photos. Yeah, so here you can see the, like, the lyrics, like what I talked to you about before. Um, and I used, like, the words like, come or Lord, so it could easily morph into come, Eileen, uh, come on Eileen, and um, uh, connected them both through the words and the music so uh, it could just morph seamlessly and in the original lyrics I tried to use symbolic words associated with the story and the scene such as water which plays a big part of Nick's trauma and is also connected to the baptism and bringing one home connects us to Nick's mother who we can also see in the scene and she is the reason why Nick baptized. Um, so here's a photo from where we recorded Aaliyah in the studio. So it was nice to have her studio recorded vocal prior to set so she didn't need to sing along to my guide vocal on set for example because on set we play the music through the speakers uh, and then it's like nicer that it's her vocal than than my vocal and then here is uh, another rehearsal shot so we had a couple of hours uh, in the morning of the shoot day to rehearse the song and dancing before going to the shoot and so this is the the gospel choir you see here did you choreograph the dance too uh, no, so Chris, um, Chris Stoffer Horsey, uh, <laughs> yeah, was the choreographer for oh, the so good. for the series. So he then rehearsed them, and then we also recorded the the singers, and then we had some extra time after the dance rehearsals. So we also recorded uh, in a second position. So we had a lot of options for when we were going to mix it, which was very, very good. And then we also recorded it on set. Um, so we had, we could blend those different recordings in the mix. And um, yeah, here's just a list of <laughs> what was good to think about for someone who's starting out, for example that was like part of your questions um, that you first get the music ap approved and then it's good to send out the music to the performers uh, so they can learn it and then having backing tracks and click tracks ready and then of course I also conducted the choir on set which was also very helpful just to draw out as good performance as possible and you need to send the files to the sound recorders and having headphones for the performers uh, to pitch to while we're recorded on set so those were some of the things that were good to think about for a recording like that and then in the final result we actually mixed in the combination of uh, all of those recordings and also uh, my a demo recording which was me and Damien singing all the parts yeah it does sound um very big mm. like sounds like a massive group of choir that really yeah. adds that effect when you get baptized yeah and it also gave us the chance to blend like how it goes in and out of like a bit the normal choir sound but also like this kind of distorted not 
distorted, but like, um, where, what do you say? In, inside the head, so we could easily move in and out by using, having all those different recordings. Today, Maria also brought us um, a feature film that she worked on called Oconee. Maria, can you walk us through that? Yeah. Uh, so Akoni is an Australian feature film uh, about a Nigerian refugee coming to Australia, uh, where he by chance befriends a young woman. And they are both trauma traumatized by previous events in their life. So they they support each other through that. And uh, it's a beautiful film that just been released. And so it's shot both in Australia and uh, in Ghana. How long have you been working on the film? How, how was the production and how did you um, meet the director and started the relationship? Yes, yeah, so Jenna Chanel Hayes, who is the director and writer of the film, I actually met through Guy Gross uh, at Church Street Studios. So he introduced me to Jenna and put me forward for the job. And uh, it was first to uh, write the music for a teaser, which could end up being a feature, which it did. Uh, and she had just reached out to the studio to find a composer. Uh, and that was uh, quite a while ago now because the firstly the, the film took a long time to shoot because they needed to be able to go to Africa to shoot it and then it got postponed, the actual release got postponed due to COVID because um, she wanted all the uh, actors to be able to be together and the lead actors from London and then also the African team but then uh, it got released anyway, even though everyone couldn't be together. But that's so it's been a long journey. Demons are rushing in, crushing me, holding me, pushing me, eating me. I'm breaking, aching, ready to give in. So tear open my chest and rip off my hand and cut me to bits. I fall so hard, my body's covered in scars. But running away, would only take so far. Pull me out on my skin
Was the singer、um, the one on the title? In yourself? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so、um, uh, this I sang together with、uh, Ituna Pepper, who.、Uh, so, Ituna is、uh, a beautiful Nigerian、uh, singer、uh, who I worked with,、uh, Anna Kony.、Um, so, it was to bring. Like the authentic Nigerian vibe. So she contributed Yoruba vocals to the soundtrack on a few cues,、uh, so, and also on this song. So I wrote the song and then she、uh, translated the verse she was singing into Yoruba. And then some other cues we collaborated on. So I created a backing for her to. Sing on top of.、Uh, so she also, so it's a co、uh, composition,、uh, some of the cues for a Kony too. And that was so wonderful to have, you know, the authentic Nigerian、uh, feel like something that I can never do. Even like you can research, you know, how much you want, but you can never get that pure, authentic vibe. So,、um, This song、um, is used in the end credits of the film, but, and it captures really the, the pain of displacement and isolation and grief that is portrayed in, in the film. And the various stems of the track are used throughout the film, particularly the backing vocals and the piano is used as a theme, and then it all comes together.、Uh, With the lyrics and everything in the end credit.、Mm, how did you meet the singer? So, Jenna、uh, found the singer when she was filming、uh, in Africa. She found Ituna. So, she, Ituna is a singer songwriter as well, so she's released her own material. Oh, so you guys、uh, worked remotely? Yeah, yeah, it was all remotely. Yeah. But it worked really well, even though this was pre COVID, <laughs> before the whole world learned to, how to work remotely. But that was, was no problem at all. And、uh, it, yeah, she's just a wonderful human being and incredible singer. So. Oh, amazing. We'd love to watch the film when it's、um, released. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, Maria, you were also the composer and sound designer working for、um, Sydney Theatre Company. What,、uh, what does that involve in, in your、uh, daily working life? Yes, I'm, I'm there now.、We're, we just finished week、uh, three of rehearsals. So, we have a couple of more weeks、uh, before we open. It's、uh, the play The Lifespan of a Fact. Which is directed by、pa、Paige Rattray and performed by Gareth Davis and Sigrid Thornton and Charles Wu. And I will also be performing live with them on stage for the shows、uh, at the Roslyn Packer. So、um, you should come to Roslyn Packer from the 24th of September to see the show.、Um, it's been a fantastic process so far. I wrote a lot of music before going into rehearsal because that's What I、uh, enjoy doing because once rehearsal starts, it's quite full on, especially if you're performing as well. And I also like being in the rehearsal room with the performers and the director because that's kind of where it all happens and with the creative team and everyone. So I、uh, like being there. So having a lot of material prepared beforehand. To then be able to develop with them, it's, it's very good.、Um, and it's been just wonderful. It's such an incredible place to be in.、Um, yeah, so 
so it's a wonderful process and we're very much looking forward now to get into the theatre. And um, do you feel like it's sort of uh, the knowledge you learn from a screen composing and working as a screen composer, the knowledge and skill kind of transfers into theatre production? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're, because we just work with stories, right? And uh, my background is more in theatre, so I actually like morphed from theatre to screen and then now this year seems to be mostly about theatre so far. And, uh, but yeah, tidally, they, they're just, it's just stories, it's just storytelling, you know, like, uh, so it's, it's definitely easy to move in between them. The process, of course, is a little bit different, but uh, no, very, very much. Wakefield, for example, to me felt more like a theatre project, like, than a screen project because there was so much live elements in there um, and I really really appreciate the variation uh, going from a screen project where you, you're mostly in, in the studio like a studio rat and then <laughs> you uh, get to be more in like in the room with the actors with theatre and then of course also if it's project where I perform this is like a completely different thing than from the screen composing but composing wise and storytelling wise it's very much the same. Very nice. Is there, is there a preference in the end? I, I have to say theatre. Uh, theatre is like <laughs> Even though I love film, and you can do so much in film, but the feeling for myself, the, the theatre is a little bit deeper in, in the heart, I have to admit. And musical theatre as well, uh, where you can really, really expand in the music. So, um, yeah, I must say, and I think it is mostly actually because the people, the like you when you you work with theater you get to work with all the people involved and it's just you have the script and everyone just work with the script and you you're in the room together with everyone the process is like more human in a way and i think i think that's right just it's just so raw and it's real and it's different every night and um yes yeah, so i i I think I have to succumb to this mm. As opposed to us composers being in a dungeon every day. <laughs> Don't see the yeah. sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think like with the screen, is it's really beautiful to to work on a beautifully shot like um, project. This this is like it's equally beautiful, um, and in in most project, I've I've been actually lucky to be involved so early on in a lot of um, projects that I worked with on screen as well. So I also get to be on script level, which is really good. Um, that's absolutely an interesting um, career path, working in between screen production and the theatre production. Um, is there any advice for emerging composers for which way to choose or both or how to get there? Um, well, firstly, I think it's a good thing to test a lot of different things, like, and just find what you like. And I really think you should go with where your heart is. That's like where I, what I've learned, that you should just really <laughs> trust that that is what is important, because I think also, if you're happy with what you're doing, you're able to put in a lot of effort into it and that way you can create really great work and um, you, you're able to spend a lot of hours on it without it feeling like work. And I think that is like a, a kind of a good way to uh, build your portfolio and meet people and just really be a human being in in it and then when it comes to the actual composing 
I think really, really listen, listen to the story, what the story needs and what you can draw out of it because it's all in there, like in, in the writing and in the, uh, in the story of itself. And I think if you just really kind of tune into that and really listen to the people that you work with and listen to the vision that they have and then I think it both becomes really enjoyable and also you're able to have a really good output and that alone will, you know, take you to the next 